What's up, everybody? You're watching the debut episode of Top Commander, where the goal of this show is to put a spin on things and help keep the Commander format a little bit more casual and fun for your playgroup whenever you go to play Commander Nights. I'm your host, Matt. So, what do I mean by keeping, keeping things casual and making things more interesting? Putting a spin on it. What does that entail? Well, one thing that you could always try when you go to play Commander Knight with your playgroup. Do a bit of a change up. Now what do I mean by that? You can still play Commander, just add a little variance to it. There's a number of different formats that you can play within this format to make the game a little less competitive, maybe make the thing make the game night a little more interesting and a little bit more wacky. Maybe you end up with some really crazy stories about how the plane chase killed you. Now, how do you go about doing different variants? Well, look at the number of variants that you could potentially do. This video is about five different variants that you could try for the next time you get together and play Commander with your playgroup and see if y'all enjoy it. Maybe y'all have some fun, wacky interactions. You never know. First one that we're going to be talking about is Arch Enemy. Now, what is Arch Enemy? A lot of people don't really remember Arch Enemy from the old days. Um, so, it was a set that came out where you get a 60 card deck, and it was designed that the Arch Enemy person is basically ganged up on. The format was designed for 3v1. But the Arch Enemy had the scheme deck so every turn you flipped over a new scheme and you got whatever effect came off of those schemes which gave the arch enemy a little bit more of an advantage to handle three people at one time now the another part to that format that might have some people a little concerned. It was designed for the three people to have 20 life and the Arch Enemy has 40. Well in Commander we're playing with a format where we start off at 40 life and we're playing a 100 card singleton deck so one thing that you could try if you did go this route is set the Arch Enemy's life total at maybe 60 or 80 see how that goes and just kind of toy around with it a little bit as far as getting the Arch Enemy cards themselves, they can be a little pricey. Uh, Card Kingdom right now has some sealed Arch Enemy product for $129. Uh, and the Nickel Bolas Arch Enemy uh, on Card Kingdom is actually about $60 right now. If that's a little out of your price range, just go down to your local game store and ask the owner, see if he has any of the old product laying around somewhere in the back. Maybe he's got it on a shelf behind the counter up top that most people don't recognize. And if he hasn't sold it in so long, you could probably talk him into selling it to you for a decent price so that way he could at least move it off his shelf. Um, worst case scenario, just look on eBay or Amazon, see what kind of deals you can find on uh, the Arch Enemy product. Uh, because the only thing you're really after is the scheme decks themselves for the Arch Enemy. Because beyond that, you don't need anything else. There's nothing specifically for the Arch Enemy in those, uh, in those products besides the schemes. Now, with that, the way that the turn order works is you have the arch enemy who flips over a scheme and then you have the number of people ganging up on the arch enemy. It's a turn by turn thing going on. That's the way the system works. But everybody that's facing the arch enemy makes their turns in unison with each other. They don't share fields, they don't share life points anything like that the arch enemy has to knock out one player at a time or if he can knock out all three at the same time there's ways to do that of course but just try it I would say just 
give it a shot and see how you like it. Get, make sure that everybody's on board with trying this variant, though. Second variant that you could try as well, and this is one that I recommend to everybody that plays Commander and is looking for a new way to make Commander Knight even more interesting or more crazy. Um, or even if you have that one player in your playgroup that wins all the time, throw down some plane chase. You'd be surprised. Plane chase can help you win a game or it will utterly destroy you in a heartbeat. You never know what's going to happen with that thing because it flips over so many different random effects. It can help you draw cards. It can make you take damage. It can mill you. It can blow up the board. It can ramp you. It just has a number of different wacky effects and you don't know what it's going to flip over which makes it the wild card at the table and can make for a very very interesting game. Now as far as getting hold of the Plane Chase product again you probably talk to your local game store see if they have any laying around in the back that they haven't been able to sell. But other than that Card Kingdom has the Commander Anthology for $140. I know that sounds pricey but you don't necessarily have to go that route. Even though there are some really good cards in those decks that you could probably use. I know one of the decks had like two copies of Baleful Strix in it. Um, but every Plane Chase deck came with uh, the artifact called Fractured Power Stone, which is a two mana rock that taps for a colorless, or you could tap it at sorcery speed to reroll the planar die. If you wanted to go further into plane chase just get a couple of copies of just fractured power stone and maybe say everybody swap out mana crypt or soul ring in their deck for the fractured power stone nobody plays with soul ring nobody plays with mana crypt or you know if you have both i guess it's just kind of up to you uh, your discretion on how you want to do that uh honestly if you're running mana crypt and soul ring i would say swap out the mana crypt keep the soul ring because the mana crypt flipping making you take damage when the plane chase is already making you take damage you know you never know what's going to happen with that which is the crazy part or keep the mana crypt and take out the soul ring and then you got an extra additional I could take damage going on because of mana crypt and the plane chase possibly going to kill you as well again we're just looking for a casual format we're just looking for a fun neat way to play commander to make things a little bit more interesting it's not always about who's going to win the game because in that instance you never know there could be a way that the plane chase ends up killing everybody at the table I don't think there's a, anything like that but I could be wrong I haven't seen it happen yet that's why I say that next format that you next variant that you could always try as well Try to do a team thing. What do I mean by a team thing? Well, there's a format called Two-Headed Giant. Just have two players versus two players. You take your turns in unison, you share life points, you can block for one another, but also make it a little equal. Everybody knows who the quote-unquote best player of the group is or the most powerful deck of the group is and everybody unfortunately knows who the quote unquote worst player is is that a bad thing no not necessarily team those two people up and then have two other people playing against them just try to make it a little fun make it a little interesting don't try to go oh we're going to team up because we're the two best players at, uh, in our play group that's not fun Try to do something a little more relaxed. Take a break from trying to win all the time and just do something completely different and out of your wheelhouse. You never know. You could have some crazy stories, as always. And that's the goal. We're just trying to have fun with our friends and playgroup and family that we play this format with. Alright. Next format. This is one that a 
judge down at my LGS actually told me about, uh, and I've, it's been a while, and I don't remember what it was called, but I want to say he called it, like, Huntsman. So the way that this format works is you have a number of people playing Commander. Everybody has their name written down in a hat. And then you start, before the game even starts, you draw one of the names. You're not allowed to reveal that name to anybody. You don't tell anybody what name you have. But you're only able to attack the person whose name you pulled. You can't attack anybody else at the table until the person that you have is dead. It's kind of like putting a bounty on some on somebody. You have a bounty, you have to kill that person before you can attack the rest of the table. Now, if you draw your own name, you are free to attack anybody. But you can also leverage that politically in your favor because if you come in with a 2-2 on turn 1 and go to swing at somebody and you have to reveal what name you pulled just to verify and if they see that you can attack anybody it may not work in your favor or it could it just depends on how political you are in that case but again you're just doing it for laughs. This is a fun format. Just go just go with it. <laughs> Alright, last one that I'm going to talk about today. The Ruhan game. Now, if you're familiar with a legendary creature called Ruhan of the Fomori. He is a Jeskai commander, I believe. He's one, a red, white, and a blue. And he's a 7-7 seven, seven that has to attack each turn. He also says that whenever he does attack, you have to randomly select who you're attacking. So how can you turn that into a variance? Each player, whenever they go to attack, now you can go to a great lengths with this, or you can make it simple. You could say, okay, during your combat phase, you have to roll one die to see who you're attacking. Or you could go a little bit crazier and say, all right, your entire field has to swing. You have to roll a die for each creature to see where each creature is going. Oh, you have a sort of feast and famine on this creature, and you're wanting to attack this person. Well, rolling the die says you have to swing over here at this Jess guy player, <laughs> and it's just it's just light spirited gameplay with a wacky interaction in Commander to just enjoy. Because that's what this game is all about. Playing with friends, having fun, getting some laughs, and just trying to get some really good stories out of it. You'd be surprised how many funny stories you get out of just playing Chase alone. But... With that being said, that about wraps it up for the day. Um, if you enjoyed this episode or any episodes that I'm going to be uploading in the future, be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it with your friends and play group, let them check it out, see what they think. Hit the notification bell so that way you can find out when I upload new videos. And if you wish to support me directly, go to patreon.com slash topcommander capital T, capital C. You can support me directly through there. Check out the different tier levels. I do have some small perks set up, and I'm not asking for a lot for this channel to keep going. A single dollar could go a long way. But, with that being said, just remember, it's a casual format. Have fun with it. Enjoy the game. Enjoy your friends. And create memories and stories with each other. See you next time.